Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo 3 Monk build guide. This guide will be for the Uliana Monk, which is the starter set for monks in Season 24. And while this is a Season 24 build guide, we'll also cover what changes you make for the non-seasonal variant, so that if you're coming from the future, this guide will still apply. In this video, we're going to cover the gear, the skills, and the playstyle that you'll want to rock this build. The game the footage you're seeing in the background is by Top Player Rob, and you can also follow along with the written version of this guide on maxroll.gg, link in the description, put together by Top Player North War and a collab with other Maxroll content creators. So this build revolves around the Uliana set. The two-piece makes every third hit of your spirit generators apply Exploding Palm. Exploding Palm will be the big source of damage in this build. The four-piece, your seven-sided strike, deals 777% of its total damage with each hit. All damage taken is reduced by 77% for seven seconds after applying Exploding Palm to an enemy. Now, seven-sided strike will be very important in this build, but its damage is inconsequential compared to Exploding Palm. And this leads into our six-piece, increase the damage of your Exploding Palm by 9,000%, and your seven-sided strike detonates your exploding palm. So one of the many reasons for using seven-sided strike will be to explode our exploding palm. And I guess to make that make a little bit more sense, we'll jump ahead just a bit to talk about exploding palm. Exploding palm causes an enemy to bleed for a chunk of weapon damage as physical over nine seconds. If that enemy dies, while it's still bleeding, it then explodes for a bunch more damage to all nearby enemies. So 7-sided strike with the 6 piece of Ulianas would make that exploding palm detonate prematurely. And that's a good thing. Now the rune we're going to be taking is Impending Doom. Exploding palm no longer causes the enemy to bleed. But if the enemy dies while affected by Exploding Palm, they explode for 6,300 weapon damage as cold. Over double of the unruined version. So we're getting rid of the damage over time and relying entirely on explosions, which is why this is the best rune for Ulianas. Alright, now that we have a better idea of how Exploding Palm works, let's get back to the gear. We're going to take the Fist of Astarask, Exploding Palm's on-death explosion damage, is increased by 500%. Next, we'll want to take the Gungdo gear. Exploding Palm's on-death explosion applies Exploding Palm, and the damage of Exploding Palm is increased by 100%. So when Exploding Palm on one enemy detonates, if there are a bunch of enemies around, that detonation will then apply Exploding Palm to all the other enemies. Now, we'll also take the Lion's Claw. Seven-sided strike performs an additional seven strikes. This doubles the number of Exploding Palm detonations that we'll be getting. Next, in our cube, we'll be getting the Flow of Eternity. This increases the damage of seven-sided strike by 100%. We don't care about that, but it also reduces the cooldown of seven-sided strike by 60%. The more often we can pop 7-sided strike, the more often we are popping our Exploding Palm Explosions. Next, we're going to take a Ring of Royal Grandeur. This reduces the number of items needed for set bonuses by 1. This will allow us to equip only 5 pieces of Ulianas. Ring of Royal Grandeur, you're going to put it in the cube and you're going to get that item from Act 1 Bounty Bags. And the reason for this is because we want to work in 2 pieces of Captain Crimson set. This is a crafted set. There's a level 70 version and a lower level version. You want the level 70 version because the two-piece reduces all skill cooldowns by 20%, all resource costs by 20%, and then the three-piece, damage dealt is increased by your percentage of cooldown reduction, and damage taken is reduced by your percentage of resource cost reduction. Since we'll be stacking a lot of cooldown, we're going to benefit from a huge damage buff. Now in our cube, we're going to put a Binding of the Lost. Each hit with 7-sided strike, grants 5% damage reduction for 7 seconds. With our 14 hits from 7-sided strike, the 7 doubled, this will be 70% damage reduction. We'll also work in a Traveler's Pledge and Compass Rose. This gives you situational toughness and damage. While standing still, you deal more damage. While running around, you take less damage. And we'll round things out with a convention of elements. You gain 200% increased damage to a single element for 4 seconds. This rotates through your available elements. For your legendary gems, we're going to take a Bane of the Stricken for greater rift pushing. We're applying a lot of hits to enemies, and the more you attack an enemy, the more damage you deal to that enemy, and 25% increased damage against rift guardians. We're going to take a Bane of the Trapped, big damage multiplier against crowd-controlled enemies, 
At level 25, this starts applying its own crowd control to nearby enemies. And lastly, a Gogok of Swiftness. This gives us more attack speed, more dodge, and more cooldown. Very important. Now for Season 24, if you have access to Ethereals, you will want Bartok's Cutthroat. Consecutive hits to enemies increases damage by 10% up to 100%. So this gives us double damage against targets that are taking long to kill. In Greater Rift Pushing, that's going to be almost everything. So... In an ethereal, a Bartex will be your best in slot, but your number one priority will just be to get any ethereal with either a Lion's Claw or a Fist of Astarask on it, or a Flow of Eternity. The three legendary powers you want for this build, season or non-season, Flow of Eternity, Lion's Claw, Fist of Astarask. If you don't have an ethereal, then it has to be Flow of Eternity in the cube, and you equip those two fist weapons. If you have an ethereal, it doesn't matter what rolls on what, you just want to make sure that you still have those three powers. Now I'll go over exactly what we want on every piece of gear, but first a look at the skills. We'll take Way of the Hundred Fists Assimilation. Each hit with the third hit increases your damage by 5% for 5 seconds. We're taking this for a couple of reasons, the first being the Assimilation Rune itself gives us a nice little damage buff, but we're also going to be synergizing this with the passive Mythic Rhythm. Every third hit from a Spirit Generator increases the damage of your next Damaging Spirit Spender by 40%. So we're going to be using Way of the Hundred Fists in order to gain our Mythic Rhythm buff, in order to then buff our Exploding Palm. We'll get back to the mechanics on that in a bit. Next, we're taking Seven Sided Strike, Sustained Attack. The damage here doesn't matter, so we're taking Sustained Attack, to reduce the cooldown to 14 seconds so that we can be spamming this non-stop. As mentioned, Exploding Palm Impending Doom. In addition, we'll take Dashing Strike, Blinding Speed. Dashing Strike for mobility, Blinding Speed for the toughness that we get. 40% increased chance to dodge for 4 seconds after using Dashing Strike. We'll take Cyclone Strike Implosion to pull in and group enemies in order to ensure that our Exploding Palm detonations are spreading to them. And then lastly, Epiphany Desert Shroud. More Spirit Regeneration, 50% damage reduction, crowd control immunity. We want 100% uptime on this. For our passives, we need Beacon of Etar. Reduce all cooldowns by 20%. We want Harmony. 40% of your single elemental resistances from items instead increases your resistance to all elements. This gives us more toughness. The Guardian's Path. While dual wielding, you gain a 35% chance to dodge incoming attacks. As mentioned, we're taking Mythic Rhythm. And then for your fifth passive, because with an Ethereal, you have an extra passive, you'll want either as an extra life near-death experience, or for more damage, Momentum. Now, if your Ethereal doesn't have the ideal passive on it, that's okay. Don't trash an Ethereal because of a bad passive. Gaining your class's fifth best passive, it's a nice little buff, but it's not the end-all be-all. Alright now, for the gameplay. When you pop into a rift, start by triggering Epiphany, that gives you that 50% damage reduction. Then when you see an enemy, use Exploding Palm on them manually, then pop 7-sided Strike, and then you should have all of your buffs up. At that point, you can settle into a rotation. And that rotation begins with getting a lone enemy or two, and manually using Way of the Hundred Fists against them three times. This activates our Mythic Rhythm passive, meaning the next Spirit Spender that we use will deal 40% more damage. However, because of the two-piece bonus of Uliana, we will have applied Exploding Palm to these enemies that we hit, but the Exploding Palms that we've applied do not have that 40% damage buff applied to them. So now you want to just either abandon those monsters that you applied your unbuffed Exploding Palms to, or wait for those Exploding Palms to expire. Then, while you're still holding on to that Mythic Rhythm 40% buff, that's when you apply Exploding Palm now to an enemy. It's gonna have that 40% buff. Then you use 7-sided Strike, and thanks to the Gundo gear, it's now going to spread the Exploding Palm, and it's spreading that 40% buffed Exploding Palm. You just have to make sure, though, that you don't hit Way of the Hundred Fists again before you do this. If you do, you're going to apply once again an unbuffed Exploding Palm. Because the Exploding Palms that are applied by Way of the Hundred Fists, they're free. They're not costing resource, so they can't be buffed by Mythic Rhythm. So now that you've built up a bunch of enemies with Exploding Palm on them, now you start looking at your Convention of Elements. Once you reach the end of your Lightning Cycle, you stop moving, and you use Way of the Hundred Fists three times, and then you start spamming 7-sided strike. If you have a follower with an oculus ring and an oculus circle spawns, 
jump into that with Dashing Strike, and then Cyclone Strike mobs to bring them closer to you. Then at the end of your physical cycle, refresh your Way of the Hundred Fists assimilation buff. Then as you get into cold, you should be able to pop 7-sided strike twice before your cold rotation ends. Cold is your damage rotation here. Then over the next 12 seconds, you can move forward, progress throughout the rift, pull monsters with you with Cyclone Strike, use 7-sided strike a few more times to keep spreading the exploding palms and to refresh your buffs, and repeat. Now as for exactly what we want on every piece of gear, let's start with our shoulders. Dex, all resist, area damage, cooldown. We're stacking a ton of cooldown reduction on this build. Our Helm, Dex, Crit Chance, Exploding Palm Damage. Amulet, Cold, Crit, Crit. Chest, Dex, All Resist, Reduce Damage from Elites. Gloves, Crit, Crit, Area Damage, Cooldown. Bracers, Cold, Dex, Vitality, Crit Chance. Belt, Dex, Vitality, All Resist, Life. Pants, Dex, Vitality, All Resist. Boots, Dex Vitality, All Resist, Exploding Palm Damage. Convention of Elements, Crit Chance, Cooldown, Area Damage. Compass Rose, Dex, Crit Chance, Crit Damage, Cooldown Reduction. And on our weapon, Area Damage, Cooldown Reduction, and at Higher Paragon, you can roll off your Dex for 10% damage. For Paragon Points, max out your move speed, then put into Vitality until you have about 650,000 life, then dump into Dexterity. For Offense, Cooldown Reduction, Crit chance, crit damage, attack speed. For defense, all resist, life percent, armor, life regen. Utility, area damage, life per hit, resource cost reduction, pickup radius. For our follower, we're going to go with an enchantress. We're going to give her the smoking thurible so that she doesn't die. For her skills, we're taking temporal pulse for the slow that it applies. Prophetic Harmony for the cooldown that it gives us, Powered Shield for the armor and damage reduction, and Focused Mind for the attack speed. We're going to give her a flavor of time. This emanates to us. Pylon effects last twice as long. Nemesis Bracers emanates to us. Shrines will spawn an enemy champion. Oculus Ring. When an enemy dies, there's a chance it's going to create a golden pool in the ground. Stand in it and deal 85% more damage. If you really despise the Convention of Elements, or you really want more toughness, you can put a unity on her, a unity on yourself. This will have the effect of doubling your toughness, but you're going to lose a lot of damage. We'll give her some Ice Climbers to make her immune to freeze and immobilize effects. And then you can give her other gear for more attack speed, but it's not a high priority. Number one stat priority on her is Intelligence with attack speed as a distant second. Now for speed Nephilim Rifts, you can work with a variant of this build. First off, we'll drop the Binding of the Lost from the cube and instead put a Leoric's Crown in there for even more cooldown reduction. We'll drop Captain Crimson set, put back on Uliana's pants, and as a belt instead wear the Gold Wrap. This will be one part of our trifecta, the other two being a Boon of the Hoarder gem and an Avarice Band ring. Avarice Band goes on the follower, it emanates to us, but Gold Wrap. Gain armor for 5 seconds equal to the amount of gold picked up whenever you pick up gold. Boon of the Hoarder Gem makes gold drop when you kill enemies and gives you a movement speed buff when you pick up gold. And the Avarice Band that we put on our follower, each time you pick up gold, increase your gold and health pickup radius. And this basically means that in speedrunning T16, you will be invulnerable, you're going to be scooping up all gold on screen. And then for our Helm, we're going to take a Mad Stone. Your 7-sided strike applies Exploding Palm. We're going so fast, we won't even be casting Exploding Palm manual anymore. We're going to be letting 7-sided strike do all the work. We're going to get rid of the Traveler's Pledge set. We're going raw damage here. So, a Squirt's Necklace, while not taking damage, damage dealt is increased by up to 100%. To ensure that we maintain that buff, which only stays up while we're not taking damage, we're also going to take a Molten Wildebeest Gizzard. So we're dropping the Bane of the Stricken, not needed for speedruns. We're also dropping the Gogok of Swiftness. That's going to cost us some cooldown, but the Molten Wildebeest Gizzard at rank 25, after not taking damage for 4 seconds, gain an Absorb Shield for 200% of your total life per second. This gem will help us keep up our Squirt's Necklace buff. Then we're swapping out the Compass Rose for an Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. Reduce the remaining cooldown of one of your skills by 1 second when you hit with a resource spending attack. We'll be triggering that with Cyclone Strike. And we're dropping the Convention of Elements for a Stone of Jordan. Cold skills deal more damage, increase damage against elites. For our Ethereal, we don't need to go with Bartux anymore, because we'll be killing stuff fast enough that we're not benefiting from Bartux doubling of damage once you hit an enemy 10 times. 
Instead, we'll take the Jade Talon. This gives us more attack speed and it has some cooldown on it. We're going to drop the Lion's Claw. We don't need those seven additional strikes. Instead, we'll take the power of an Ingum. Your skill cooldowns are reduced by 8 to 10 seconds for 15 seconds after killing an elite pack. For our skills, we're going to drop Way of the Hundred Fists and instead take Mantra of Conviction Annihilation. Passively, nearby enemies will take 8% increased damage and killing enemies will give us move speed. Actively, we deal even more damage. We're going to change the rune on Dashing Strike from Blinding Speed to Quicksilver. This increases the maximum charges to 3. This is if we feel that we can sacrifice the toughness, which we should be able to. Similarly with Epiphany, we'll swap the rune from Desert Shroud to Insight. Increases the bonus spirit regeneration to 45. This allows us to pop Cyclone Strike freely, thus triggering our Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. And since we're dropping Way of the Hundred Fists, we're also going to drop Mythic Rhythm and instead take Seize the Initiative. Dealing damage to enemies above 75% life increases your attack speed by 30% for 4 seconds. And as for the gameplay, it's very straightforward. You just dash and 7-sided strike and everything dies. And you can group things together with Cyclone Strike if you need to. This is an elite hunting build ideally, and that's to trigger our Ingum. We'll also make some changes to our Enchantress for this setup. We'll give her the Hand of the Prophet token, which gives her all skills. As mentioned, we're giving her an Avarice Band. We're also going to give her a Ring of Royal Grandeur, so that we can then put two pieces of the Cane set on her and two pieces of the Sages set. This is to benefit from the three-piece bonus of each of these sets. Sages gives us more Death's Breaths, and Kane's gives us more GR keys. We'll also give her some Gloves of Worship. Shrine effects, but not pylons, last for 10 minutes. Emanates to us. And now her gearing priorities will be Intelligence first, then Vitality, Life, Armor, All Resistance, Life per Hit, and then Attack Speed. She needs some help staying alive now. So we're also giving her two Legendary Gems. The Esoteric Alteration and the Mutilation Guard, which will both give her more damage reduction. And that's going to wrap up this video. But do stay tuned for more video guides and check out the guides we've already posted, including a guide on how to fast farm the ethereals for the transmog. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Check out these other videos and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.